Meat? Seriously? Ok, American people know about beer. Cider is also not surprising. But meat? In Europe or in Russia, I wouldn't be surprised if I was offered to try alcohol honey. But what about here, on the east coast of America? Ipswich, a small coastal town, about an hour north of Boston. Small Midori 1634, which I accidentally stumbled across on the internet when I was looking for a topic for the first release of this show. Unusual? And this is exactly what I need. Ok, let's find out. Ok guys, so 2 minutes from downtown and we've reached this 1634 Midori. Let's take a look, let's go inside. Mmm, nice smell. Today our guest is Dan Clapp, founder and owner of Midori 1634. So, hi Dan. Hello. How Thanks. are you? Good. Thanks for coming. Can you talk about your Midori? We want to know the history of foundation of this place. Yeah, so um, we uh, opened the Midori up about uh, three and a half years ago. I had learned about mead actually on a trip to Denmark dating back to um, about 20, 2004. So uh, going on 15 years now, um, I actually picked up a bottle of mead uh, up at, over in, De in Denmark and uh, this is my first bottle of mead I ever had. Eventually opened it at a dinner table and um, uh, said, hey, this stuff's pretty good. What is this stuff? And I started researching mead and seeing uh, what it was and I saw that it was fermented, uh, fermented honey and uh, said, oh, I can make that. I was a home beer brewer and uh, so I started making mead. People started saying, hey, this stuff's pretty good. Uh, my friends and neighbors would always have the stuff at the parties and stuff like that. Who was that. first uh, who tried it? Yeah. Uh, my wife. Yeah, my wife and myself. Um, and my wife didn't like any of my early stuff. She would, uh, I'd bring her a sample of my batch and she'd smell it and she'd tell me, Ugh, or, yeah, that's, that was pretty good. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Total process from uh, start to finish from the commercial point of view is about six months or so. Um, the, the time in the fermenter is uh, usually between three and five weeks, depending on whether you're going to add fruit into the fermenter. And then what we do is we take the mead and we move it into our aging barrels after about a month. And that's where it's going to sit for uh, five more months or more. Um, so over time, mead becomes more integrated with flavors, smoother. Uh, you can compare it to um, aging like a red wine. It just becomes better. And um, the more patience you have with mead, the better. And what honey do you use for your product? What, uh, how do, what honey? Uh, what honey? So we, uh, uh, we really strive to use locally sourced honey. Um, we have, uh, so most of our um, meads use what's called wildflower honey, uh, which is, a, wildflower honey is just a generic term for honey that you don't really know the source of the, uh, the nectar and pollen that's used to make it. Um, so if you just put a beehive in your backyard and the bees fly off wherever and make their honey, uh, that's going to be called wildflower honey. And how many flavors do you have? Um, well, actually on the top shelf here you can see all the flavors we've made in the three and a half years we've been open, which is uh, up to 22 now. So it's called a manual floor corker, so we're going to uh, go ahead and cork a bottle here. Here we go. So now the cork is inside there. Uh, it starts swelling back to its natural state. You can see actually it's squeezing a little bit of uh, air out of there as we, as we talk. So that's going to eventually get to its right size where it's going to seal it up. It's going to keep the uh, mead inside here and prevent oxygen from getting inside of it. So how many times a day do you do? <laughs> we try and do a bottling run about once every week and a half where we do about 600 bottles. Yeah. So You're a strong man. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps us busy. It keeps us busy. We can spin the labels on here. Go. So, uh, so we wanted an old look and feel to our bottle. So we have a, a kind of a pocket theory look, uh, something you might have pulled off the shelf a hundred years ago or something like that. Is a pull tab to remove the wax and prepare it for dipping. Uh, there we go. So it looks a little bit like a ribbon. And then now we're going to hand dip. Uh, every one of these gets hand dipped. Can I try it? 
Oh, sure. Yep. I'm going to put it down to this level, right? Yep. And just twist. Perfect. Yep. You can come all the way up. All the way up. And now what you want to do is angle it just a little bit. You want to, yeah, just throw it like that. Yep. And then uh, just be patient and watch until it's almost done dripping. Right. Perfect. Look at that. There's kind of a mead revolution going on in the United States right now. Um, it's gone from about 60 meteries to over 380 in about six years. First one we're gonna try is called a sizer. Uh, this is the driest mead I make. It's made with apple cider and honey fermented together. So you take fresh pressed cider, um, uh, sweeten it up with honey, and then add that yeast in there and then do the fermentation. A traditional style mead, a traditional mead is one that just is the honey. It's either called a show mead or a traditional, uh, you call it a show mead when you're showing off the characteristics of the honey. So we had talked about the varietal honeys uh, that you can use. Uh, this is a clover honey um, and it's gonna have its uh, own flavor profiles of it, 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 than if you change to a different type of honey. So uh, honey, water, yeast, that's all that's in that one. So it's just your basic, basic mead recipe. And, I, and as you it's see, it's more uh, not like wine, but more uh, I don't know, like liquor. Yeah, some people get more feeling of an aperitif, you know, uh, yes, yes, after yes. dinner type thing. And mm -hmm. you're getting a little bit. It's not super sweet, but it has more of the honey mm -hmm. flavor come through, right? So, um, like yep. Um, we happen to have a peach meat out, which is actually made with. Um, uh, we just bottled it, so we have an unlabeled bottle here, but this is a peach vanilla, so this one actually is a combination of a spiced and a fruit mead. Um, this one, a lot of people uh, get that vanilla flavor and they think dessert with cake or, or um, uh, you know, a cheesecake, that type of thing. Interesting combination. It smells pretty good. So when you get that sweetness, now you're starting to think, oh, this is definitely an aperitif, right? This yes, is more dessert yes. mindset. <laughs> So we have one or two meads that we release uh, seasonally. Uh, one is our cranberry mead, and that's the next one you're going to have. So this is again locally sourced. We have um, actually, I'll, I'll bring this one up because it's a. I love, this is one of my favorite labels. I think it's a very yeah, fun, so it's fun, very creative name. Uh, creative cranberry. name. Uh, cranberry is actually the original name for cranberries uh, around this area. Um, the pilgrims came across and they uh, actually named it cranberry because of the bloom of the cranberry when it drapes over looks like the head of a sandhill cream. And so they call it cranberry, and that's what you have a picture of on the front of the label. So, uh, so we're gonna uh, try this one. This is a tart, sweet, sweet mead. This one uh, is a great pairing, dinner pairing. In fact, this is perfect for Thanksgiving dinner because of that tartness. You have a little bit of bite to it. What we were going for in this one is that sweet tart uh, combination. You're a pretty impressive mead drinker. You really shoot that down pretty fast. It must be that. I really like the cranberry. And another that you didn't taste is the raspberry. Love the raspberry. <laughs> and I'm also very partial to strawberry rhubarb, which they have right now, too. Strawberry fields. Very good stuff. So I'm feeling pretty good after tasting. How do people feel after, the, after tasting? Uh, uh, so, so do they require to dance after that? <laughs> you're welcome to dance. We, we, we like to think that we, you're happier when you leave the meadery than when you came here. You get a bottle and take it home and... And, and they see that uh, for, uh, for safe operations, so you have two bodyguards here. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs>